Hey there, this is Terry Cowley, weekday breakfast presenter on 1FM Shepparton. Thanks for checking out this podcast. It was recorded live as part of The Brecky Show, which you can catch 6 to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday. Now it's time to drop around to Cozzy's Corner. Corner. Good morning to Mr. Roman Coz. Uh, good morning, Terry, and good morning to our listeners. And uh, um, I'm just uh, letting you know that Mr. and Mrs. Coz are in uh, Beechworth this morning, having a great time. About to head back very shortly. How is Be- Beechworth looking on this fine morning? Oh, fantastic! It's a beautiful place. Well worth coming to. What have you been up to over there? Uh, just looking around, uh, checked out a couple of couple of towns, and um, uh, what was the jail? Went to the jail and uh, the asylum. A uh, pretty, pretty sad looking place that. And they let you back out again, did they? <laughs> well, I knew how to climb fences. I learned that as a kid. So. Just as well. Yeah, no, for sure. Terry, today I'm going to be talking to you about a film and TV series that I grew up with. And a lot of people listen don't to say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Maybe we can. Maybe we can pl- quickly play the theme and the see if okay. anyone recognises it. I think. Right, I think it's that. a bit of a giveaway. Um, right. Actually, f- f- pretty pretty quickly. Here go we go. For it. Oh, I don't really think that is that recognisable, actually. <laughs> that was the Lassie opening theme. Oh, uh, well, this is live radio, isn't it? Okay, Lassie. Um, Lassie first... Uh, well, that was the theme for Lassie, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Um, Lassie was first featured in an 1859 short story called The Half-Brothers by uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, who was a social historian at the time. And in 1857, she was the first person to ever publish a biography about... Charlotte Bronte, who um, ended up writing that classic, Jane Eyre. Now, in 1940, a guy called Eric Knight, who was a major in the U.S. Army, <clears throat> decided to write a story called Lassie Come Home. And um, in 1943, three years later, the film uh, was a made starring Roddy McDowell, uh, who was a young boy in one of my favourite films. I don't know if you've seen How Green Was My Valley, Terry. Have you no, I haven't, that? but Roddy McDowell was in Planet of the Apes, yay. Correct. Yes, 1968, Planet of the Apes. Gail, I think he was Galen. Yes, yeah, I think he played a couple of roles. I wasn't really a Planet of the Apes person. No, oh, really how could you not be? That's a good one. That would be a good one to do in future, Roman. Uh, Terry, well, let's mark it down as one that's coming up, all right? Okay. Uh, there was also the TV series, in, of course, in 1974, 75. Um, and uh, Elizabeth Taylor was in that uh, first one as well. Uh, Eric Knight, I don't know whether you actually saw the film because unfortunately that same year he died in an air crash um, <clears throat> to do with the army, so um, I just don't know whether he actually saw the film. It would be an interesting thing to know if he did, but never mind. Uh, in uh, 1945, <clears throat> we got The Son of Lassie, starring Peter Lawford and uh, uh, very young June Lockhart. Now, Peter Lawford, as many would know, uh, married Patricia Kennedy and became the... Uh, the brother-in-law of um, the President of the United States and his two brothers, Robert and Edward. And, um, yeah, well, there we go. You know, you say son of Lassie. So Lassie, um, you know, was female, obviously, uh, and Lassie probably comes from, you know, the term lass. But I I never thought Lassie was female. Well, you're very correct, Terry, because I'm telling you now, up until (laughs) 1951, they made seven films with a dog called Pal, P-A-L, uh, and was a male. Now, see, I just knew, I just knew. What about an identity crisis for that poor dog back in those days, not knowing whether he was male or female, eh? <laughs> Bit of a cross, cross-dressing <laughs> dog, perhaps. <laughs> possibly, possibly, who knows. Uh, in 1946, uh, yeah, we had The Courage of Lassie with uh, Elizabeth Taylor again. In 1948, we had uh, the first of two appearances by Edmund Gwynn in uh, Lassie films. Uh, people might remember Edmund Gwen as the um, Father Christmas type in that terrific film, The Miracle of 34th Street, that we saw every Christmas for years and years. Uh, now, in that film was a very young Janet Lee, who, as we know, married Tony Curtis and became the mum of Jamie Lee Curtis, and, of course, who would forget Janet Lee in that film, Psycho? 
goodness gracious, and that's right, in the living daylights out of a lot of people back in 1959. <clears throat> In 1949, The Sun Comes Up. Uh, it was the name of the next um, film related to Lassie. And it, Gee, that, uh, was pro- that was a prophetic title, wasn't it? The Sun Comes Up, yeah. Well, there we go. I'm joking. Jeanette MacDonald was in it. with. Uh, she used to be with Nelson Eddy in those um, films, you know, The Mounties and all those sort of things in the late 30s, early 40s. Uh, the young boy in it was Claude Jarman Jr., who three years earlier had won... Uh, a, a, um, a Junior Academy Award for his role in the film called The Yearling, opposite Gregory Peck and Jane Wyman. So, 1949, we had uh, The Challenge to Lassie with Edmund Gwynn again. This one was based on the story about a dog called Grey Friars Bobby, whose owner died and the dog slept beside his grave every night until the dog himself died. So, it was a sort of a, uh, sort of a, a you know, a, Sort of, it was basically about Grey Friars Bobby, and that film, Grey Friars Bobby, was actually made a few years later. In 1951, uh, the last Lassie film from MGM, The Painted Hills, which was also called Lassie's Adventure in the Gold Rush, had four reviews, and that was the end of MGM uh, doing any of those uh, Lassie movies anymore. In 1959, the TV series started alongside a radio series as well. <clears throat> Might surprise a lot of people to know that Lassie is the fifth longest TV series ever in US uh, history, uh, behind Simpsons, Law and Order, Gunsmoke and Law and Order and the Special Victim Janet. And it went for 19 seasons. Um, now, mostly the male actors were, were, weren't really known all that well. Tommy Reddick, John Provost, Robert Bray, uh, the uncle, George Cleveland, Hugh Riley, John Shepard. But it was the women that... Um, sort of made themselves uh, a bit more famous in years to come. Um, one of the mother roles was held by June Lockhart in the TV series, and she starred opposite Peter Lawford in that film way back in 1945, uh, The Son of Lassie. And as you know uh, only too well, uh, June Lockhart became the mum in that TV series, The Lost in Space, one of your favourites. Ah, you know? I kind of, yeah, I kind of wasn't recognising her name, but yes, of course, I know who you mean now. Yes, so and another well-known actress and probably the best one who played the mother in the TV series was Cloris Leachman. Uh, she played uh, the mum just prior to June Lockhart. She ended up being nominated 22 times for the Emmy Awards and won eight of them. And um, <clears throat> I liked her the best in the film called The Last Picture Show. Have you seen that one, Tess? Don't reckon I have. Yeah, great film. And uh, look, she won an Academy Award as the best supporting actress in that. That was a very successful film. Nominated for eight Academy Awards and uh, raked in twenty nine million dollars in a one point three million budget. Um, you know, very very successful uh, series. She also appeared in uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Show for uh, five years in a recurring role. And now in seventy eight, we had an interesting thing. Lassie became a musical drama, and it starred James Stewart. His very final appearance in the film. Fennell Roberts, who some people remember as. Um, Adam Cartwright in Bonanza and Trapper John M.D. in that spin-off from MASH. And there are quite a few songs in that. Now, the song When You're Loved was written by the Sherman Brothers in, in, for that film, Richard and Robert. Uh, they were very, very famous for writing songs for films, especially films like Mary Poppins and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and a, and a stack of others. Uh, the song was nominated for um, Academy Award as the best original song but didn't win it. Now, it was sung by Debbie Boone, uh, who was the daughter of uh, that 1950s and 1960s singer Pat Boone. And in 1977, um, she had a hit with a terrific song called You Light Up My Life. Now, I was interested in finding out what songs were in that, and I got a hell of a surprise when I when I found out that in that film, Pat Boone sang a song for the album that they made from the film. Mickey Rooney played a small role in the film and also sang a song. And so did Jane Stewart sing a song. So I was... <laughs> I was very surprised to, uh, to, to see all of that. Um, after that, um, they had a couple of more goes at Lassie in 1994 and 2005, but they were two big flops, and uh, and uh, Lassie was left alone for a few years until 2020 when Blow Me Down, Lassie Comes Home comes back again, but this time it was produced in Germany and it was actually in German. And uh, no that, doubt that's, German just, that's just wrong. <laughs> Lassie comes home in Germany as if it would be something to see or listen to. It would be, it would be just amazing, really. 
Like, I haven't got much more to say about Bassey except, you know, how people just loved it. And over the years, they had all those little books. Um, were they called Golden Age Books? I think that's the name. Little thin books. Golden that, books. Uh, yeah, little thin books. They had those sort of TV series like Lassie and, you know, Bonanza and all those sort of other kids' ones, My Three Sons, all those sort of TV shows. I got a little Guernsey with it. Uh, it was, look, it was a terrific little series that a lot of people loved. Do you want to hear some German? I'm not very good at it. Um, Lassie Come Home would be something like Madel Kong Natch Well, well did you, you knew I was born in Germany, didn't you? Well, do you, do you, can you translate it? it? Well, not really, because um, my German is pretty low. Well, well I, did know, I, I did know you were born in... in Deutsch. I did know you were born in Germany, of course, because I have interviewed you yes. uh, about your life, and people can still look that up uh, on our One FM podcast channel if they'd like to hear about part, Roman's that life. Was part two, Terry. Sorry, that was only part one. I <laughs> working. When you finished that interview, I hadn't even started work. <laughs> oh well, you know, there's always a, always a prospect for a part two. So um, we've got a song queued up. Yes. Is it is it that you light up my life? Is it that one? That's the one. <laughs> that's the one. Uh, Debbie Byrne, uh, uh, who's sort of the only link off you get to Lassie was through her. So Debbie Byrne, of course, that. not to be uh, confused with Debbie Byrne. No, no, Debbie Byrne, <laughs> Byrne uh, daughter. Got it, folks. I'll catch up with all of you on uh, next uh, Monday. Thanks, Roman. Bye. <laughs> You've been listening to a 1FM podcast.